We're excited to be here on Kingdom Living Now, where we're discussing the armor of God. My name is Danette. Pastor Bobby Somers and Pastor Julian Mills is here to continue on with the discussion that we're having on part two of the shield of faith. Now, we talked about faith. This kind of faith is not just faith where we're just believing God for things. Yeah. Right. But it's a walk of faith. It's a yeah. life of faith. Yeah. A a we're being where we're being committed to God for life. Yes. Can you unpack that some more? Okay. Now, when we look at the 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 scriptures and understand what God intended for us, we realize that God wants us to be one with Him, and when He created man and placed man in the earth. Man became an extension of who he is and a representation of who he is. And to put on display his grace, his love, his compassion, it, literally the life of God. Mm. Because God is invisible. God is invisible. And, mm. and again, when you think of faith, that's what faith allows us to do. To be able to go beyond what we are able to see. see. Right? Mm -hmm. So the life of faith is taking what is invisible and making it visible. Yes. So we are placed on a visible scene by the one who is invisible, and he's the one who designed it so that he who is invisible would be seen on the scene by the visible. We are that visible one. So the purpose of even our bodies, when I study the scriptures now, I understand that even our bodies, our bodies was not given to us for us to go off and do what we feel like all doing. Right, all it's right. given to us to, to host mm -hmm. the spirit of God yes. and to put on display the character, the yeah. nature mm -hmm. of who God is. Mm -hmm. So that's why we see the scripture comes back in, 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 the, in the New Testament and says to us that our bodies are the temple, temple. Yes. of the Holy Spirit and the temple of the living God. So in order for all of that to play out, faith becomes an important factor. Because I, I might be jumping ahead of myself, but we'll come back and, 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 and connect the dots. When you look at Hebrews I was just gonna chapter mention. 11, <laughs> And verse 1 starts out saying to us that faith is the substance of things hoped for mm -hmm. and the evidence of the things that are not seen. Mm -hmm. Even that particular scripture, when we hear faith is taught, in, that's one of the main scriptures that they use. Mm -hmm. But yet it is not fully understood. Because mm -hmm. we hear faith is the substance of things. What things mm -hmm. you think we're thinking of? We only think of the things mm -hmm. we eat, mm -hmm. material things. the material things, yeah. Yeah. while there are other things that God wants to come into play in time right. that is beyond food, that right. is beyond yeah. clothing. Beyond what is visible. Beyond what mm -hmm. is visible. Mm -hmm. And faith is what's going to bring those things. So it's the life of faith that is going to bring those things into being. Because if you, if you look at it, and um, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says something which is also now allowing us and taking us away from the limited thinking that it's all about material things. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says, for by, for by it, faith, the elders obtain a good report, a good testimony. So right there, that is taking you beyond mere material things mm -hmm. notice mm -hmm. so it's talking about the life of these yeah. elders the way how they lived yes yeah. that it was faith that caused them to live that way it was faith that caused enoch to walk with god mm -hmm. enoch when it says enoch walk with god it was more than material things of course enoch was a, it was a lifestyle enoch was committed to god for life e had committed himself to life. He was on life row. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> not death, not death row. <laughs> not death row. Life row. We yeah. always hear about death row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, death row is that the person is is going to be there until they die. Mm -hmm. But if you look at even Enoch, literally, Enoch did not die. Mm -hmm. No. The scripture said he walked with God and he was faith. The same chapter here allows us to understand that that was because of faith. Yes. Mm. So we see that that's beyond believing God for a piece of bread, believing mm -hmm. God for clothes, believing God for money. And as I said in the previous episode, that God doesn't have a problem with that because that's where we all start. Where we come to God, and that's where faith starts out, where we pray and we believe God, you know, we pray and we ask God for a house, we pray and we ask God for, for money. But we have to grow up yes. and go beyond that mm -hmm. so that God will be able to put and display those other things mm -hmm. that is bigger than food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're, Jesus made this statement in, in, in Matthew and in the other passages where he talks about the kingdom in that context and he says he asks a question is not life more than food mm -hmm. and the body more than raiment more than clothing mm -hmm. so then you have to ask yourself the question now if life is more than food because the way how people live around us they're living as if life is only for food yes why do they work <laughs> for what they shall eat mm -hmm. what they shall wear what they shall drink mm -hmm. So that's the whole culture around us. And Jesus says, life is more than food. If life is more than me eating, what does that life look like? like? Yeah. What does it look mm -hmm. like? And if my body is more than me dressing it up, what is the purpose of the body? Mm -hmm. Really? So faith is designed by God also to take us beyond just merely asking for the food, asking for for clothing and stuff like that. Because I remember, as I said, when I started out there, I, I used to pray for clothes and I used to pray for food and stuff. But then I got to the point where I begin to now pray for the will yes, of yes, God. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. Because there's some things that God has preordained before time that he wants to put on display through my life. And that has to, it's, it will only happen when I grow up and come to the place of understanding that life is more than food. Yes. You have to be living a life of faith. Ah, yeah. and that the body is more than raiment. So that when, it, it may even come to that point in my life where I may not have any food, but it's not going to bother me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, oh my You're not God, gonna lose your faith I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to lose my faith over it. What am I going to do? I am still trusting God, knowing who he is yes. and what he has promised me. And that it, it becomes easy and natural for you to know that, guess what? This, it's nothing for God to take care of. Mm -hmm. So that is what with the shield of faith is about. And for many believers right now, the shield of faith is not, um, for a lack of a better word, I would use this um, as, as uh, this word to say it's not available to them yet or it's not activated for them yet mm -hmm. because of how they view faith. Mm -hmm. And because of how they're viewing faith, they cannot experience it or have the benefit of it yet. So it's kind of like the, if my, as my maturity grows, then my, my experience with faith transitions yes right so if yes. i'm still on milk m milk bottle stage i can't expect to uh to operate faith as one who is say a grown-up or an right. adult right you know right. so it, it's kind of related like that well, and god and god probably would it wouldn't be it wouldn't even be in god's best interest to give someone who, you know certain things or release certain um level of, of, of responsibility where faith is concerned if they're still on a, on a level of, of baby bottle or, you know, milk bottle level, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but, yeah. but then you're endangered then because the fiery darts, uh, if you can't with, withstand those fiery darts. The, and that's gonna, what's happening to a lot of believers. Yeah. The fiery dart is hitting them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you see where many have walked away from God. Yeah. True. Because if they're not getting the kind of teaching, because even when you think of what mm. Peter says, 
that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. Mm -hmm. So many believers, they remain at that baby stage mm -hmm. never growing mm -hmm. as they should to come to the place of using the shield of faith. Yes. Because faith, again, when you think of it, that there are persons who think that I need more faith. It's not that I need more faith. I need to grow. Mm -hmm. As I grow, I am able to utilize the different... Um, if I may use the different facets that mm -hmm, are there, mm -hmm. because they're different um, levels yes. mm -hmm. for somebody to understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that is within faith. And it comes to me by way of growth. It reminds me of, uh, of uh, the scripture that talks about when they were choosing Stephen. And yes. he says, you know, choose Those men who were that were full, full of, of faith. faith. So though they were fully matured. Mm -hmm. where faith is concerned to handle faith at the level and where they were being placed. Because remember, now they're going to be set over yeah. the affairs of the daily distribution. So it needed persons that were mature in spirit and in faith to handle what was going to take place mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were mature. So you couldn't just choose someone that was, say, even born again yesterday or mm -hmm. someone that was born again a, a week or a yeah. month ago. Yeah. You need someone that was mature, understanding what faith beyond just asking for things, look what it looks like, and able to utilize it. Right. You think of even when it says in James, if any sick among you, let them call for the elders. Mm -hmm. Let them anoint them with oil and pray over them. And the prior of faith. The, notice the elders. You notice? It said, let them Maturity. call for the elders. So those are persons who are mature. Because an elder in scripture is not necessarily someone that is old in age. Mm -hmm. It's not defined by age. But it's defined maturity. by their maturity in the things of the spirit. Right, yeah. right. Like in Galatians 6, it says, if a brother is taken into a fall, one that is spiritual... That spirituality there, it's about maturity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One that is spiritual restores such a one. Mm. So this is the kind of faith now that is being talked about when we talk about the shield of faith. And you look at it too, to operate in the shield of faith, in the natural, you don't send a novice to be <laughs> a soldier anyhow. Nope. You know, to, nope. to, con to, to nope. be up against that kind of a conflict. They go through a process of training. It has to be training. somebody who is trained and mature. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because, yeah. no, this, uh, this is frontline battle. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> this is frontline battle. So this is, and every believer has to grow up and come to this place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and understand what it is when we talk about the armor of God and each piece of it, where it really works for us and understand the, the if I may use this word for lack of a better word now, the mechanics mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. as, as you said, um, every believer has to come to that uh, maturity. Mm -hmm. um, it, it also means that my shield of faith can't cover you. No. Right? We all have <laughs> no, to grow no, no. up into mm -hmm. the maturity to, to access exactly. our own armor. Yeah, yeah. Right? To protect yeah. ourselves. I, because, can you think of it? In a moment that you're going through something, I, 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 at no time I can ever leave myself exposed. So if you're going, I can't take and say, oh, borrow mine. <laughs> and when you finish, you, you, you know, you I'm thinking about the, the, the virgins. <laughs> ah, there you go. The five wives and the five foolish. So, yeah. so every person born again, every believer in Christ has to come to that understanding, come to that knowledge, come to that place and mm -hmm. embrace it mm -hmm. so that they are able as an individual. Yes. To, to, to experience the protection that the, the armor And when you think of it to too, them. God have an assignment for each individual to fulfill in the earth. Yes, mm -hmm. corporately, yes, but in an, an, an individual basis. And I have to come into that uh, maturity in my faith for me to execute that assignment, yeah. right? So, you know, it, it's hard for me to use your, um, you know, faith to, 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 to fulfill my assignment. No, I need my own uh, faith in order to fulfill the assignment that is assigned to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm thinking about this. In order for us to grow spiritually, I remember someone asked me this question about maybe a year or two ago, and they, the question was, how, how, how would I know 
that I have grown or I'm fully mature, you know, to handle certain things where spiritually it's, it's, it's concerned. And I said, it's based on the teachings of the word that you're getting. Mm -hmm. And I think of it in the natural. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. And then mm -hmm. Peter says that as newborn babes, we shall desire the sincere milk of the word mm -hmm. that and we may grow. grow. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think about it that in the natural, as a child grow, because remember the baby start out and the baby start out with the breast milk and then they get mm -hmm. to the point you're giving them the bottle and you and, and I, I then they I, move to solid food. And then I understand also even where the feed for the, that you give them in the bottle, there is um they they have them in different yes. different yes. yeah different, different levels. Levels. Age levels. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's there is um something one and there yeah. is two and there is two plus and yes, so on. Yes, yes. So they're different levels. And then after you move them from the bottle, then they start to eat. And then as they're eating hard food, even with the hard food, they're different levels. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. What has happened in the church? Because a lot of people say, oh, but the word is being taught. Mm -hmm. But from what level? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if a person is getting the level, the word taught to them on the level of the milk stage. Yes. As you desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. But you have to grow to a point where you're now eating strong meat. Right. Hebrews chapter 6 says, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 5. And strong meat, it means that now you have teeth mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. bite. <laughs> bone, you're able to crack bone. Right. So it means that the word is now going to be taught on a level that would bring you to yeah. that stage. Yeah, it needs to it needs to be taught on a level to complement the, the development. Ah, because you know, if if if, I, if I'm if I'm feeding you something that you're here and you're and you're the, the food is down here, it's not gonna nourish you in the way that it should to get you to the next level. Of so your, to of grow your up in that faith, yeah. the word itself has to know be taught on that level to make the transitions mm -hmm. that is necessary. As you said that, I remember even with, with Jesus and his disciples, mm -hmm. he said, there's many things I want to tell you right now, Okay. but I can't I, tell you I, yet I, because I, you, I your appetite is not, <laughs> not ready. It's not but ready for the, it. You in, can't handle it. In the natural, yeah. if, a, if a child is not fed, mm -hmm. they die. Exactly, they and, wouldn't and grow. The, the word said, with, with lack of knowledge, people will perish. So if we're not being fed the word to have that growth happening, you perish, yeah. right? And I think of what Paul says, and um, there are preachers who misunderstand what he's saying in, in, in Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he talks about that when he came among them, he didn't want to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm -hmm. So there are preachers who accuse Paul of preaching Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. It, we, we cannot judge what Paul preached based on the epistles. Mm. We have to go back to the book of Acts. Right. And we know when we read the book of Acts what Paul preached. Mm -hmm. The things concerning, concerning the, the kingdom, kingdom. And, the, and the name of Jesus, defending the fact that Jesus was the Christ, was right. the king. Right. But why did he make that statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 2? You have to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 will help you to understand. He said, why? When I came among you, all I wanted to simply know was Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because of their maturity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In chapter 3, he said, there, there are things that I wanted to say to you, but because of your carnality, mm -hmm. I, it's a carnal in, the, in, the, in that chapter. Between chapter 2 and chapter 3, when he talk about carnal, it's not carnal as we think about flesh, fornication, and stuff like that. It's immaturity. immaturity. Right. He said, because you were carnal, I could not say certain things to you. So he was speaking to them on the level yes. that they were. And Jesus Christ and him crucified is rudimentary. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's basic school. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that those are the basic stuff. And he said, even when he came among them, they were still at the basic level. So there were other things that he, he said. He said there were certain wisdom that he wanted to speak among them, but he, he could not. He, couldn't release it. he said the wisdom that, that, that needed to be spoken, it had to be spoken to those who were mature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's one of the things that has struck the church right now. So even when we're talking about the shield of faith, for a lot of believers, sad to say, they're not able to experience the power mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. that piece of armor. Because where they are in their faith, they're still simply asking for stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As I said, God doesn't have a problem giving it to them, 
But until they grow up and realize now that faith is more mm -hmm. than me simply asking God for things. It's a life. It's about living with God. Yes. And, 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 and allow God to be able to put on display certain things through me. Yes. Through my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I, I, I would say from time to time when I said that God wants us to become a certain kind of person. It's about the growing up. Mm -hmm. That he is able to give us all of his power to do what we want. Yes. That's because when I'm, I'm using the shield of faith. Because what I want is going to be in direct connection to what he wants. Ah. There, will not, there will be no difference. Think of a child. Yeah. Think mm -hmm. of what they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what they want is contrary yeah. to the parents' um, desires and even things for them. Because a child, you know, they're seeing, they're, they're thinking childish and they're selfish and all of that. And it's sad that for most people in the body of Christ today, that's the kind of faith that they're operating in. It's about this gimme, name it and claim it mm -hmm. kind of faith. And God is saying the shield of faith is the faith that brings us into a lifestyle. And there is something that I want to look at here. And when we, I'm, I'm sure this is, we're, we're going to connect, we're, we're going to go to another episode with this. To show you something here, that this is now taking us into the level of faith that it's my life style, it's about lifestyle it's about me being committed to the, the, the cause of God, the things of God, comes what may, mm -hmm. if I may use that term. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, it says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer, there, there no longer remains a sacrifice for or sins. You notice he's saying here, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice of sin. Mm -hmm. And if I have to get that knowledge and I go back to walk away from God, there is no more sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the only sacrifice that was made and that God accepts that will bring a person into full redemption mm -hmm. where God is concerned. He says now in verse 27, and what is going to cause me to remain in that is faith. Verse 27 says, But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy and the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be though worthy who has trampled the son of god underfoot continued counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insult the spirit of grace for we know him who said vengeance is mine I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. If it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated with truth, you endure a great struggle with sufferings. With sufferings. And this sufferings is... It's, it's centered around where the soul would suffer. Because mm -hmm. again, God himself does certain things for the soul to suffer so that it will eventually learn mm -hmm. to obey and mm -hmm. to follow yes. the things of the spirit. And so the soul learned discipline through suffering. Right. All right. It says, verse 33 said, Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations and partly while you became while you became companions of those who were so treated okay. for you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods knowing 
that you have a better mm. and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward for you. Have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. So you see, what I've been reading from verse 25 coming down, this has nothing to do with me asking God for stuff. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This has to do with me committed to God for life. Yes. To walk with regardless, him, in spite regardless, regardless of. of what happens, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, God's promises will be able to be put on display. Wow. So he said, now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draw back, draws back, my soul, God says, has no pleasure in him. Verse 39 says, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, mm -hmm. to eternal destruction. Mm -hmm. But of those who believe to the saving of the soul. soul. Mm -hmm. Right? So the tribulation thing that is coming against us is to, is to have the soul coming to the place of being totally transformed, if you may. Mm -hmm. And there are not many who are able to go through that, 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 that tribulation or that testing. Yeah. So now we are the ones who believe to the saving of the soul. And that's why chapter 11 open up the way it, it opens up you see mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. so now when it says now faith is the substance of things over the things goes beyond material, material things. things it does it's knowing what is god's will for me being called mm -hmm. to live in the kingdom of god now in the earth and the things that the enemy is going to do to come against me and in those moments is my soul that is going to experience the pressure right right and if i am not committed to god mm -hmm. to trust him to the end i am going to draw back yes mm. i want to read something to compliment that that is that is powerful romans chapter 5 and verse 3 mm -hmm. going down there it says uh, and not only that, <laughs> but we also glory in tribulations. Ah. Why are we glorying it? Because what it's producing, right? Yes. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with faith. Lifestyle. And the character mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. God wants us to come into, because that character is already in the spirit. Yes. But in order for it to be put on display, the soul has to be subdued. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because it's the character that, that's talking about, you know, it's God's character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Without the soul being subdued, it's not God's character that is on display. Amen. It's mine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that is what is happening in the lives of many believers right now. Even person that is watching this right now, they're experiencing certain things happening in their life. And there's a lot of if and but, and there's a lot of doubt. I don't know if God really loves me. And does he, does he really care? Is he mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. And, and all of that is coming from the soul. Yes, yes. Because what, what communicates with God is not the soul, is the spirit. Mm -hmm. But the soul is against the spirit. Mm. And in order for me to have the soul at a place, as I said, where it's blindly following the spirit, it has to be subdued. Yes, yes. Now, there is two passages of scripture in the Bible that I know... You, I, I've never heard any preacher mention them or talk about them or preach from them. The first one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 when Paul talks about this brother that had had sexual relationship with his father's oh, his wife. wife. Mm -hmm. And he said that they should turn the person over to Satan so that his flesh would be punished or disciplined. Think about it. Turn the person over to Satan so that he would suffer in the flesh, mm -hmm. but, his, what, but, what, but his soul would be saved in the end. Mm. 
Can we discuss that next time, though? <laughs> <laughs> I know these timing are just way too short. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the shield of faith, and we're not finished. Um, please join us again next time. The shield of faith is that which extinguishes all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and it allows us to stand our ground in the midst of the deceptive attacks of the enemy. The enemy desires to, to our demise. Mm -hmm. it, you know, its, it's whole plot is to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has given us that ability to fend off all of his attempts of, to destroy our lives. And this comes through, as we're talking about the shield of faith, it is coming through a life that is committed to God always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? We're going to continue our discussion next time. So join us again on Kingdom Living Now.